나처럼 groovy하게 나처럼 groovy하게 I think a lot of people are under the false impression that most K-dramas are cheesy romance stories, and while there are a fair number of them, there's a lot of variety in the types of shows available. Since it seems like a lot of you guys are kind of new to K-dramas, I thought it would be best to make a video introducing different subgenres and sharing some recommendations. Shows typically overlap with more than one genre, so I'm not trying to say that the clips from dramas in a certain category can't apply to another, but I just base the pairings by the most prevalent themes. I hope this helps you find a great new show to watch. Slice of Life As the name implies, slice of life dramas are known for their sense of relatability. These shows don't have dramatic story arcs, but rather focus more on character development and interpersonal relationships. I feel like there are two subcategories within Slice of Life. The first features relatively ordinary characters in everyday situations. The most famous example of this is the Reply series, which consists of three different shows depicting the ordinary lives of Korean families in the 80s and 90s. While the premise might not sound riveting, especially if you don't have a connection to Korean culture during this time period, the way that the shows portray friendship and growing pains is something that feels universally relatable. The second type of slice of life drama is more sentimental, dealing with heavy topics like illness, death, and personal struggles. These dramas usually don't have a huge focus on romance and tend to have more bittersweet endings. A newer drama I highly recommend checking out is Navilera. The show pairs a young, talented ballerino who becomes bogged down by the circumstances of his life with a 70-year-old man determined to learn how to dance. You'll definitely need a box of tissues for this one, their resulting friendship is so heartwarming to see, and the show's theme about living life without regrets is a message we could all learn from. Young Adult Young adult dramas tend to incorporate other subgenres into their plots, especially romance, but what makes them unique is their coming-of-age aspect. Many of these dramas center around themes of friendship, first love, and identity. If you're interested in a light-hearted teen romance show, I would recommend Extraordinary You. The show centers around an extra in a comic book who becomes self-aware and embarks on a mission to change her fate within the story. It definitely has its fair share of cliché, cheesy moments, but also pokes fun at several common K-drama tropes which kind of annoy me, and I like the self-awareness that it has. If you're interested in a show made for slightly older audiences, I would recommend Age of Youth, which was actually the first K-drama I had ever watched. It centered around a group of roommates in college and shows how they support each other through the ups and downs of young adulthood while simultaneously dealing with the ghosts of their past. The characters are mostly relatable and down-to-earth, but there are plenty of juicy plot twists that make the show engaging to watch. Historical From what I've noticed, there are generally two types of historical dramas. The first requires immersion into the historical setting to develop the plot. The conflict of these dramas tends to center around political strife and societal standards. While a lot of these dramas are completely fictional, creating a world that's relatively historically accurate is imperative in contextualizing the protagonist's struggles. One drama I would recommend that falls under this category is 100 Days My Prince. It centers around a prince who develops amnesia after escaping a plot to kill him, and must learn how to live as a commoner while tensions in the palace escalate. The second is a sort of hybrid between the past and the present. This can come in the form of flashbacks, a common occurrence in supernatural dramas. The window to the past usually serves as an exposition to the plot, and offers comparisons to demonstrate character development in the present day. This may also include time travel, where the past is viewed through the lens of a more relatable outsider. Scarlet Heart is a popular example of this that's great for beginners. 
The show centers around a young woman who gets transported back to the Goryeo dynasty and ends up getting involved with the princess of the palace. Fantasy Fantasy shows involve supernatural elements, which may include mythological creatures, superpowers, or even alternate universes. What makes fantasy K-dramas unique is the incorporation of Korean legends into these shows, and may even include historical flashbacks. If you're a fan of more lighthearted shows, I've recently been watching My Roommate is a Gumiho, and so far I really like it. It centers around a college student who accidentally swallows the bead of a 999-year-old fox, and the two end up becoming roommates to protect the bead. If you like more serious shows, I would recommend Hotel Del Luna. It centers around the immortal CEO of a hotel for ghosts, who hires a new manager years after giving his father a second chance at life. Romance Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't there some romance component in almost every show? To be fair, I would say yes, but there are many shows where the romance is the main focus, so I thought it warranted its own section. There are two major subdivisions of romance dramas in my opinion, romantic comedies, which tend to be tonally light and fluffy, and romantic dramas, which are a bit more serious and melodramatic. A must-watch rom-com is Crash Landing on You. It depicts the love story of a South Korean heiress who gets rescued by a North Korean soldier after accidentally being transported across the DMZ. The show has a great mix of hilarious and heartwarming moments and features one of my personal favorite K-drama couples of all time. Descendants of the Sun is a great romance drama. I know some people consider it to be a rom-com since it has comedic moments, but from what I remember, it's a bit more on the serious side. It follows a surgeon and a soldier who break up because of their busy schedules, but fate brings them back together when they get stationed at the same place overseas. Suspense I usually lump action, horror, and thrillers into one big subcategory of suspense. Suspense shows keep you on the edge of your seat and are heavily driven by the plots. Action shows are packed with intense fight scenes and usually revolve around themes of justice and revenge. Horror is more gory, relying on scare tactics to get your heart racing. Thrillers usually center more around psychological tension, often providing some sort of commentary on human nature or society. I admittedly haven't seen too many of these, so I'm not the best person to be giving recommendations, but one of my favorite K-dramas, Sky Castle, fits into the thriller aspect, especially towards the end of the show. Sky Castle centers around the lives of wealthy, powerful elites. The parents are obsessed with ensuring that their kids carry on their legacies and resort to drastic measures to get them into top universities. The show contains powerful messages about privilege and education, and each episode leaves you wanting more. Makjang I personally haven't seen any Makjang dramas yet, but I felt like this list wouldn't be complete without mentioning them. Makjang dramas are roughly the Korean equivalent of soap operas. The show center around outrageous storylines with over-the-top characters. These shows rely on messy drama, plot twists, and shock factor which is hard to look away from, but may still have deeper underlying themes to them. Web dramas If you love watching shows but don't have the time to commit to a 16-episode story with hour-long episodes, web dramas might be a better fit for you. These shows usually have 10-20 to 20 minute episodes with under 20 episodes per season and generally feature up-and-coming actors and K-pop singers. Many web dramas are also available for free on sites like YouTube, making them more accessible. The 18 series is a great place to start for newbies. It follows a group of high school students navigating conflicts with friends and family, trying to figure out their career paths, and dealing with crushes. These are the subgenres that I think are most prevalent in K-dramas, though there are definitely some shows that don't fit into these labels as neatly or belong to something I didn't mention. 
Make sure to let me know what some of your favorite K-dramas are in the comment section. Thank you for watching!